Uh, with me today, Mr. President, are two of my valuable colleagues from my office, Ms. Uh, Maddie Dibble and Mr. Christian Ami. And I'm glad to have them today and thank them for their good work. You know, Mr. President, um, from afar, um, being a, an NFL football player looks like a lot of fun. But if you've ever been down on the field when those guys are playing, it is brutal. I mean, it is brutal. Um, some NFL linemen weigh over 300 pounds, and it's all muscle. Um, a lot of NFL quarterbacks, they're pretty big themselves, but they're not 300 pounds, probably missed their high school days when, uh, when they only had a chubby 16-year-old lineman trying to, to tackle him under those Friday night lights. Um, we have a, a, a player on the New Orleans Saints that we're all proud of in, in Louisiana, Mr. Cam Jordan. I'll bet even Mr. Jordan, who's a starting defensive end for the Saints, and one of the best in the NFL, has days when he, he wishes his competitors were only half as big as the ones he faces uh, every Sunday and every day in practice. But think about this. If Mr. Jordan were to announce tomorrow that he identifies as a 16-year-old, and uh, if Mr. Jordan then tried to join the football team at Zachary High School, my alma mater, no one in America would pretend that Mr. Jordan is actually a student athlete with the right to take the field along with teenage boys. I mean, most Americans would, 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 would think you're from outer space. They would be thinking, what, what planet did he just parachute in from? I mean, every sane person in Louisiana and on planet Earth would understand that a 34-year-old NFL player has no place tackling kids who haven't even been to the prom yet, for God's sakes. Not only would it be unfair to allow Mr. Jordan on the Zachary High School football team, uh, he'd probably send a few kids to the hospital in the first quarter. In the first minute, men and women don't take the field against one another for the same reasons. It's fundamentally unfair. And women could get hurt. Yet there are activists in our country today. I wish I didn't have to say this. There is a president in our White House. Who, um, who think the laws of physics and biology don't apply to transgender athletes. And these activists and President Biden are happy to destroy athletic opportunities for every woman in America to prove their point. These activists and President Biden are working throughout the country, you've read about it in the media, to force bi biological women and girls to compete against biological men and boys. The ACLU is one of those supporters. The ACLU, for example, says it's a, quote, fact that, quote, trans girls are girls. Now, these activists and President Biden say that it is a, quote, a myth, they call it a myth, that transgender female athletes have a physical advantage over biological girls. As an aside, if that is the case, if 
this is a myth and not a fact, then you have to wonder why so few transgender men who are actually biological women are anxious to play on male sports teams. But I digress. You don't need, the fact is, you don't need a graduate degree in anatomy to know that these claims are specious. They just are. Both the medical and the physical science and the data show that men have obvious and significant advantage, advantages over female athletes. I mean, unless, unless you're, you're the reason that your parents drink, you know that. It's just a fact. That's how our Creator made us. Even before birth, baby boys begin developing different hormones and skeletal structures that help them outperform women athletically. Testosterone exposure in the womb before the baby is born alters brain development in boys. This improves their motor skills, increases their aggression, two, two traits that, that benefit competitive athletes. Boys also experience what doctors and scientists call a, quote, mini-puberty. They call it a mini-puberty in the womb. Um, so that shortly after birth, baby boys will gain weight faster than baby girls. That's biology. That's not political ideology, that's biology. And that ultimately contributes to boys being taller than girls on average later in life. The differences between boys and girls, as I think most of us know, explode during puberty. They explode during puberty. Girls develop hearts that are 14% smaller than boys. Girls develop lungs, smaller lungs, that are 12% smaller than men on average. That helps boys take in more oxygen. Duh. It helps them pump blood more efficiently than girls can. That's biology. And that gives boys a clear edge in endurance sports, sports like uh, running, cycling, swimming, rowing. Girls also during puberty, again, a biological fact, develop a wider pelvis on average. And this decreases the amount of force their legs can exert when they're lifting or kicking or pedaling. That's another relative disadvantage when you compare female athletes to male athletes. Boys develop broader shoulders. I think most of us know that. Common sense is illegal in Washington, D.C., but it's not in the rest of America, and I think Americans know that. Boys develop broader shoulders to make space for more upper body muscle mass. Again, a biological fact. It's hard to think of a sport. I can't think of one in which a higher muscle-to-fat ratio isn't helpful. The average boy will also grow five inches taller than the average girl during this time. Even when women and men are the same height, men have higher levels of bone density, which helps them move more forcefully and escape more injuries in athletics. A biological fact. Women are at a competitive physical disadvantage against men from birth. And this is especially clear at the very elite levels of athletics. Top rank high school boys, for example, regularly out sprint female Olympians. Many high school boys, now we're talking the elites in high school, I wasn't one of those. But the really fine male athletes in, in high school, they can run faster than, than female Olympians. And they're in high school. 
In 2016, for example, American female sprinter Allison Felix, Miss Felix earned an Olympic gold medal in the women's 400 meter race. Miss Felix is a wonderful athlete. A year later, after she won a gold medal, more than 285 American teenage boys logged a faster 400 meter time than Miss Felix. Don't take my word for it. It came from a study done at Duke University. More than 4,300 adult male athletes across America clocked clock faster 400 meter times than Ms. Felix. And she was an Olympian. In many Olympic track or swimming events, the female world record, record holder wouldn't even qualify, wouldn't even qualify to compete against men. In strength-based sports such as weightlifting, men outperform elite women in the same weight class by as much as 30%. Activists try to distract from biological reality by claiming that men lose their advantages over women when the men, been, men begin taking cross-sex hormones. That's not true. The differences between men and women begin in the womb. And no number, no amount of hormone treatments or surgeries can undo those. Estrogen shots don't shrink a man's heart or his lungs. Nor do they change the structure of the pelvis or the size of a skeleton. Nor do they change your height. One study revealed that uh, men who have been taking cross-sex hormone treatments for two years can still run 12% faster and do 10% more push-ups on average than the women. That's just a biological fact. If you think that's misogynistic, curse our creator if you, if you have the courage. It's just a biological fact. Perhaps uh, that's why the University of Pennsylvania swimmer, you've heard of her, um, when she first competed, her name was William Thomas. She was a male. She is now a transgender female, very prominent athlete. She now goes by Leah Thomas. She went from being the 554th ranked man in swimming to a top rank woman in the 200 yard freestyle when she was allowed to compete with biological women as a transgender female. Now, at least it's in swimming, each, each athlete gets their own lane. A mediocre male athlete's transition into a top-tier female athlete kills the dreams and it kills and steals the scholarships of biological women. I'll talk more about that later. But at least the female swimmers aren't usually in physical danger because everybody's got their name. Contact sports are a whole different, whole different thing. Uh, transgender athletes have seriously injured female competitors on several occasions as President Biden's and these activist movement have been forced on many of our schools. In May 2023, 20, for example, about a year ago, a high school volleyball player in North Carolina sued her state's high school athletics association after a transgender player, transgender female, born a biological male, spiked the ball in her face. Boom, hit her right in the face. She got a concussion. She's suffering from long-term physical and mental injuries, not just physical injuries, Mental injuries. Last October, a high school senior in California suffered a season-ending concussion after a transgender, born biological male, now a transgender female, after a transgender volleyball player spiked the ball and hit this young woman in the face during the game. She couldn't play high school volleyball anymore. 
This February, a girls' basketball team in Massachusetts forfeited a game. They said, no mas. We quit. We can't go on. They forfeited a game after a transgender athlete, biological male, transgender female, injured three female players. The other team was going to run out of players, so they, they had to quit. They were, the, and the coaches were worried that more of their players were going to be hurt. Now, how many women and girls are going to be rushed to the hospital while activists and President Biden create safe places in which transgender athletes can hurt female athletes as a matter of course? Shouldn't we be asking that question? Some activists say that a biological man, as I indicated, some activists may say that a biological man has the same physicality as a biological woman. Put down the bomb if you believe that, but some, this is America, you're entitled to say what you want. And, and some say that Biological man doesn't have any advantage physically as a biological, uh, over a biological female. But that doesn't change the laws of nature. That doesn't change the laws of science. It doesn't change the laws of, of uh, anatomy. The truth is that, that, a, that a, a woman's bone doesn't care that, that the person who snapped it identifies as a woman or a man or whatever. They just know their bone's broken. American female athletes are not lab rats. They're not lab rats we can subject to a social experiment. They have goals and dreams too. And they've worked hard too to develop their skills, to earn scholarships, to win championships. No girl, no woman. No female in America should end up on the bench with her arm in a sling because the Biden administration wanted a biological man to feel included. Broken bones will heal in most cases. But transgender athletes have also inflicted a different kind of pain on female athletes. A pain that's a lot harder to mend. I'm thinking of the, the pain felt by athletes like the swimmer from the University of Florida who missed out on the chance to swim as an All-American because Ms. Leah Thomas, formerly Mr. William Thomas, who ranked 554th as a man in swimming, took her place and dominated the woman's race. We should all worry about the swimmer from Virginia Tech who didn't get to compete in the final race of her collegiate career. That's a race you'll never get back because Ms. Thomas stole her spot in the pool. How discouraging. How discouraging it must be to dedicate your life to a goal only to have these activists and President Biden rip them away because institutions are unwilling to accept the immutable facts of anatomy. I reject the proposition. I do. I reject the proposition that it's okay that some young athlete in Louisiana who spends hours in the pool or in the gym each night has to have her, her college championship taken away by a biological boy because the Biden administration says so. I reject that. Transgender athletes are not just undermining the game for female athletes. They're also stealing opportunities for women athletes to earn scholarships to get an education. This isn't just about competitive competition. It's about getting an education. That's why we call them scholar athletes. The NCAA, for example, not, not, not exact, exactly a model of courage, by the way. You ever seen a catfish once you, you catch it and bring it up on the bank? It flips and it flops and flips and it flops. That's the NCAA. They just go with the political winds. Their attitude is we have standards. 
If you don't like our standards, we have others. The NCAA sets limits on the number of scholarships available for every sport, men and women. By definition, giving a transgender athlete a scholarship means a non-transgender girl will not get one. Duh. Yet the University of Washington uh, recently offered the first Division I women's volleyball scholarship in the current country to a biological male. It won't be the last. This is the first Division I scholarship taken away from a female athlete. But it won't be the last. Now that makes President Biden happy. I'm happy he's happy. But that makes most fair-minded Americans sad. It makes me sad. Additionally, we have only just begun to see how much money is at stake for female athletes who could earn private sponsorships. Have you followed the career of Angel Reese, our star, former star at LSU, now playing in, 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 uh, in professional basketball? Have you followed the career of Ms. Caitlin Clark? They make a lot more money from their, from their sponsorships than they do from their salary playing their sport. Now, regardless of how you feel about paying college athletes, it's here. Name, image, and likeness sponsorships, they're here. And they present an enormous financial opportunity to athletes. From July of 2021 to June of 2022, about a year, college athletes earn nearly $1 billion in sponsorship deals. We're talking a lot of money here. We don't know yet how much sponsorship money female athletes can earn. We're sort of in the infancy of this. But we know for certain that they won't earn a penny if a biological male takes a spot on the team. I know that. A lot of girls are already suffering the consequences of this reality. Chelsea Mitchell, Ms. Chelsea Mitchell, for example, she missed out on several track and field championships because the state of Connecticut forced her to compete against biological boys. She sued her state high school athletic association, good for her, because she believes she could have earned a better scholarship if she'd finished first. This is what she told reporters. When colleges, quote, when colleges looked at me, they didn't see a winner. They saw a second or a third place. I wasn't a first place finisher, and I think that's what really hurt me. The playing field, I've talked a lot about it. The playing field is not the only place where young women worry about facing transgender females. The locker room has become a nightmare. Ms. Riley Gaines, a female swimmer, She's been very outspoken to protect female athletics. You've probably seen her interview. She said, I felt and feel, quote, extreme discomfort, her words, not mine, sharing a locker room with a nude biological man. She added, quote, we were not forewarned. We were not asked for our consent. And we did not give our consent. Ms. Gaines and more than a dozen other female athletes recently sued the NCAA, good for them, for forcing them to share a locker room with Ms. Leah Thomas, formerly Mr. William Thomas. The plaintiffs say that uh, what the NCAA did violated their 14th Amendment right to bodily privacy. And it's hard not to believe them. If, if Ms. Gaines, who's a tremendous athlete, and she's very well educated, felt disturbed and violated by having a biological man in her locker room, think how horrifying it is for a teenage junior high school girl. A teenage junior high school girl in her locker room after soccer or volleyball practice with a biological male. Imagine how helpless parents feel when they can't shield their teenage daughter 
from naked men and boys without killing their daughter's chances to play and win the sports they love. Here's the choice parents place, face. You can either play the sport, their, their daughter can either play the sport they love or they can be forced to look at a young boy's penis in the locker room. Are you kidding me? The discomfort that adults and President Biden are subjecting female athletes, athletes to should be enough for us to say that biological males should not be in the girls' locker room, let alone exposing their penises in front of those girls. Only fools would ignore the reality that some, not all now, but some men would abuse misguided gender policies for their own sexual advantage. We've already seen some horrific instances of this. You've, you've probably read about the disturbing assault in Loudoun, Loudoun County, Virginia. Sexual abuse in girls' restrooms by biological males. I will happily send you the media articles, President Biden, if your staff has not shown them to you. Now look, I have great empathy. I have genuine empathy for the small percentage of Americans who struggle with gender dysphoria. I do. And I hope they can somehow find peace in their lives. But I do not think that we need to sacrifice the physical safety of women. I do not think that we need to or should sacrifice women's athletic, educational, or professional opportunities just because some activists and President Biden claim that injecting biological men into women's sports is the only way to make transgender Americans feel included. And don't let activists and President Biden try to tell you that protecting women is a controversial opinion. They're going to try. 70%, 70% of Americans, poll it. You'll see this every time. 70% of Americans think that only girls should compete in women's sports. In fact, many transgender Americans are part of that 70%. They don't believe biological men should compete in women's sports because it's going to destroy women's sports. Yet their stories by some members of the media have been co-opted by people determined to force boys in, onto girls' teams and into their locker rooms. Now, Louisiana's already put a stop to this. In 2022, the Louisiana State Legislature passed a bill, it's now an act, called the Fairness in Women's Sports Act. It prohibits biological boys from competing against girls in elementary and high school, or high school sports. It sailed through our state legislature. It was bipartisan. Republicans voted for it and a whole bunch of Democrats voted for it. It's just common sense that biological girls should take the field against uh, should should take the field against biological girls, and biological boys should compete only against biological boys. That's how we in Louisiana see it. We need a whole lot more of Louisiana's common sense in Washington, D.C. Congress has done a lot. I'm proud of this body. Congress has done a lot to protect women's sports in the 50 years since Title IX became law. I'm very proud of Title IX. I think President Biden is trying to turn it into something that we don't recognize, and I don't think he has the authority to do it. But I'm very proud of the original Title IX. And it would be a great disgrace to allow activists and President Biden to erase all the progress that we have made in elevating women and women athletes in order to conduct a social experiment or in order to demand inclusion. Activists, I mean, let me give you the bottom line. Activists and President Biden, they want to force young female athletes to change clothes in front of biological boys in their locker rooms. 
They accept the biological man's slide tackle on the football field with a smile. That's what they want women to do. Just grin and bear. And President Biden and activists want young women to hide their tears when a biological male walks away with the trophy that those women have spent their entire lives working for. And it is wrong. Pass me the sick bucket. Pass me the sick bucket. That's what most fair-minded Americans are thinking. Mr. President, I suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll.